Hello to everybody. Welcome to Medico International's online ta talk, Save Yourself, Can You? Thanks that you all have joined us, even so we call this meeting at such a short notice following the initiative of my colleague Karin Zenik in Medico responsible for campaigning and social media. Of course, I welcome our special guests, Baba Wale Uvayanyu, Programs Manager, organized in Environmental Rights Action Friends of the Earth Nigeria, based in Nigeria, but at the moment in Egypt as an activist participating in the Sharm El Sheikh Climate Conference, COP27. Then Nazia Mansour, General Secretary of the National Trade Union Federation, Pakistan, based in Karachi. And Noah Bazit, spokesperson of Lützerat Lebt, a German climate justice activist in resistance against Europe's biggest source of CO2 emission, the RWE coal mines in Western Germany. I myself am Thomas Seibert, South Asia coordinator and human rights officer of Medical International. I will moderate this talk and therefore first hand over to my colleague, Lukas Schmidt, responsible for events coordination. Hi, big hello for me as well. Um, my name is Lukas Schmidt. I will be your technical support today. Um, first of all, um, it's important to tell you that this event will be recorded uh, and therefore it will be streamed and we try to get it streamed on YouTube right now. But don't worry, uh, you as we viewers will not be in the video or the audio. Uh, secondly, um, if you have any questions or comments, there will be a time to participate uh, after uh, our, all our panelists talk to each other. Um, so the event will basically have a fishbowl setup, which means you can tell us if you want to participate in the chat, and then uh, I will give you the authority to speak to uh, our panelists. Um, so just if you have any comments, any questions, tell us in the chat. Uh, and in the end, I will give you the floor, basically. Um, yeah, have a good have a good chat. Okay, let's go. We are in the middle of the climate crisis, and yet we are not. That is because there is a gap between the need for action and action taken. Floods, storms, droughts, climate-related disasters continue to increase globally, and fundamental change are urgently needed. After all, the 27th World Climate Summit in Cairo, the term climate justice is on everybody's lips. But does everybody mean the same things when they talk about it? Is the provision of funds only as one example given voluntary support? Or is this about enforceable human rights? To talk about so-called climate crisis means to talk about nothing less than about the state of the world. So the first question goes to Baba Wale because he's forced to leave us before time. At the moment you're participating at the Sharm El Sheikh Climate Conference. What is your impression? What is happening now? And what can we expect out of this conference? Baba Wale, please. Thank you, um, Medico, for this invitation. Um, for my organization, Environmental Rights Action, Friends of the Earth Nigeria, we do not take it lightly uh, that you invited us to be a part of this. So I'm just going to speak briefly on the situation here at the Conference of Parts in Sharma Sheikh, Egypt. Um, it's been two week long discussion and negotiation um, um, that has been going on. But the strength first, I will talk about the strength first uh, before I talk about the many disappointing things that we have experienced or seen here so far. Um, first, solidarity has been strengthening in the community of indigenous people, civil society groups, and everyone campaigning for environmental justice, climate justice. Um, yeah, the strength of the groups across the world has been re-energized. 
we, we, we've we gained strength from the solidarity that we have expressed for each other throughout the course of these sessions. Um, yeah, but to the sad part of it, um, many of the demands made by the indigenous people, developing countries, have all been rolled back. Many of them have been rolled back, especially the key messaging that came for this year, talking about uh, loss and damage. Um, I don't know if everybody understands what that means. Um, yeah, loss and damage simply talks about the slow onset changes that have occurred in communities as a result of the climate change impact um, on the peoples in developing countries. Um, yeah, so my colleague is calling me, we are supposed to go somewhere. So, but anyways, so it's the climate change impact, slow onset change that have happened to the people um, as a result of the climate change catastrophe and crisis in the world. Uh, and this kind of crisis and change we're talking about uh, is, is beyond what people can adapt or bear or prevent. It has gone to the place where people have lost economic stuff, and people have also lost non-economic stuff like our culture, our languages, our food, our tradition, because of the crisis that we have that has been calling people. So many people in the developing world came to this COP to demand that climate, um, the climate debt be paid and a new facility be made available to tackle the issue of loss and damage. So what we have seen in the text, yes, the first victory we got was loss and damage became a part of the negotiation text. But the second and most important part, no decision regarding this has been made with respect to the uh, climate facility that will be needed um, for, for, for funding and taking care of loss and damage in developing countries. So that on its own is a setback. And we've seen some introduction of some big texts into the, the discussion on the table uh, where, where some of the developed countries have introduced texts as unabated which gives room for every form of um, false solution to come into the climate discourse, which gives room for, for fossil fuel exploitation to continue to happen across the world. And as we know, the major cause of the crisis we are in has come from fossil fuel. As all science have said, all the different agencies have said, it's all are coming from, they are all coming from the extraction of fossil fuel. And science have also told us that if we are to have a planet that will be safe for us to live in, habitable and peaceful, we need to stop extracting the fossil fuel. We need to maintain that the temperature rise goes, does not go beyond 1.5. But with what is going on, with what is going on right now, Okay, we've lost him, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it looks as if I've lost Baba Wale. For that reason, then I would hand over to Nazir. Nazir Mansour from Karachi in Pakistan. Uh, your country has been suffering and still is suffering on a massive flood, which is a result of the global so-called climate crisis. Could you first give us a short story of what has happened there the last months, Nazir? Yeah, would you hear me? Yeah, very good. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Medico International, and inviting me to put forward what is happening at the moment at the ground. Uh, we have saw a, a tragic kind of. Uh, uh, happening, uh, it was a tragedy that uh, historically it was uh, devastating that uh, 338 million people are displaced because of the torrential rains and also flood in the rivers. And uh, actually these areas are those areas which are not the monsoon areas. Uh, and majority of them are, are barren lands. And uh, in some areas, uh, uh, they never got that kind of uh, rain, and uh, for, but for the last three or four years, we are witnessing a, a, a drastically a changing phenomena over there. So, at the moment, uh, around uh, more than two hundred to two million uh, houses has been damaged. All the railroads, 
are gone under the water. Communication was uh, totally uh, uh, is not functioning at the moment. And uh, schools, hospitals, they are not functioning because it's underwater. And a uh, number of many villages are uh, surrounded by the water and they are cut off from the mainland. So in that conditions, uh, the government of Pakistan, or we can say that the state of Pakistan failed to first rescue the workers, rescue the victims, and they were only a 5% of the 5 to 10% in between the people who were affected by that uh, climatic uh, problems. Uh, they were rescued, and even they were uh, get a relief from the government and uh, different philanthropist organization locally and internationally. So it's a tragedy that uh, not only the state was failed, Pakistani state was failed, but international community didn't come to, uh, to rescue the people over here. So there was a helplessness at the moment. I just came up three days or four days ago from a most affected area of uh, that flood. So the water was still there and the uh, villages of the villages, they were covered under, uh, uh, surrounded by the water and uh, in their uh, fields, uh, crop, uh, crop fields, there are uh, five to six uh, feet water. And in some places, even at uh, 15 to 20 feet, eight feet water are there. And from road to go to the village, they need to use a boat. And boat take around the one hour to go over there. If they want to buy uh, something for uh, 100 rupees, they have to pay for uh, one way to go to there, uh, more than 150 rupees. So house is not there and the winter is approaching. So they don't, because the houses are in not in a good condition, so they don't want to go inside the uh, hall, homes or uh, houses at night. So they sleep outside and there are the mosquitoes, waterborne disease, children and uh, women and old people, they are suffering from a different disease. Malaria is widespread, skin disease are widespread and government has a no plan, just like uh, for the rescue, for relief, and then uh, also for the rehabilitation. And we saw that uh, initially there was, uh, because it was uh, highlighted, so it was on the agenda uh, everywhere. It was in the media, but even today in Pakistan, it was not on the media. It was on a, a, a at the very last of the uh, news bulletin, it, it was taken. So it means that uh, everybody had uh, left the all these three 30 million people on the world or, or to face the what is happening at the at the moment with the environment and the, what is the weather and nobody is there to help them. Uh, okay. Another aspect of this uh, problem is just I want to share with you that uh, food crisis is emerging now. It is a looming large in the coming days because uh, it was it is a uh, wheat sowing season because wheat is our staple food. But now the problem is that uh, majority of land is under water, so they can't cultivate the wheat. So in that sense, uh, in coming days, we have a big problem for it. And because of the Ukraine and uh, the Russian war, we always import uh, wheat from uh, Ukraine. So Ukraine is not uh, 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 Ukraine is blocked, so we don't get uh, wheat from there. And our own local wheat is not cultivated. So it will aggravate the situation over here. The other one is a 45% of a cotton crop also destroyed. So it means that a less a cotton is available for our textile and garment, which is a, a, for, with which a more than 60% of, of our foreign exchange is attached with that industry. So we are estimating that uh, around the 1 million people, uh, workers in textile and garment sector might lose their jobs. So it's a, huge problematic problem over here and nobody care about it and nobody talked about it especially yeah. the government and from the international spectrum i'm saying that
Exactly, Nazi. I, I simply can can add to that that when you I was shocked some days ago when you told me for the first time that even in Pakistan the catastrophe now is moved back to page five or page six of the yeah. newspaper. Same is all over here in Germany. It was a news for some days, and then it's completely disappeared. Nobody's uh, listening to it because nothing is said. And what is not said, and that would be the next question I have to you. You said Pakistani government failed to give relief to the people, but we can say in a certain respect that Pakistani government somehow is damned to fail because it don't not has not the resources to scope with this catastrophe. But more than that, Pakistani government has claimed that it does not ask for voluntary help from those countries who are responsible for climate change, but it is asking for reparations that those countries who are responsible for the climate change have to take over responsibility. But this demand is not even commented, let's say, from the German government. So could you please go on this point of reparations instead of voluntary relief money and the quest for debt relief, which is connected to that. Yeah, uh, I was supposed to talk uh, in a second term on it and you have already raised that issue. So uh, here in, in Pakistan, there is a huge crisis because we have a one agreement with the IMF and there is a very harsh condition, conditionalities about that uh, agreement. So the people are suffering from that one. Subsidies has been withdrawn. Uh, prices are gone up till 100% uh, prices have gone up. Uh, there is a 35% to 40% inflation rate over in Pakistan. So crisis is a huge one. And Pakistani state is using that uh, flood as uh, some kind of uh, blessing in disgust. And they say that now, okay, we have a problem. We have a, a flood over here. So IMF and World Bank should uh, renegotiate with us and maybe uh, what are the harsh conditionality? It should be a more relaxed one for them. So they are talking in that term. But we from the uh, worker side, from the people side, from the other societies problem, we say that uh, we don't want a aid. We say that uh, we are the victim of the climate because of uh, uh, carbon emission and carbon emission is we are not responsible for that. Uh, the industrialized countries, industrialized states, and their policies, and also the fossil fuel uh, big companies who are getting uh, around uh, more than uh, five trillion dollar each year as a subsidy from the industrialized states. They are much more responsible for all their practices, uh, and that uh, we are paying for it, and especially from the south in Africa and many other countries and also Pakistan. Pakistan is a five most vulnerable countries in the world about the climate change. Uh, our glaciers are melting, our, uh, there is a landsliding, uh, new lakes are creating, and uh, there's a heat wave every year. Last two, two or three years ago, there was a heat wave. Around the 6,000 worker di people died in, a, in a urban areas, especially in a Karachi because of a heat wave and every year there is a heat wave. So we, uh, we say that uh, we demand from the government and government is not uh, listening to us. We, we ask them that uh, there is a time to ask for a cancellation of the debt and uh, it's not help but for the remediation and reparation because of uh, our uh, $30 billion uh, damage in that uh, in two or three months. And we have to we'll take uh, around the five to 10 years in between to rehabilitate and for the infrastructure, railroad, uh, the dams around the 60 dams were destroyed. So we think that uh, we demand from, because uh, two days ago on the 14th, we have a, a climate conference over here. We say that a capitalist mode of production and capitalist way of uh, development is, is the root cause of a climate problem over here in Pakistan. And in our demands, we demand that uh, remediation for repression and all cancellation of our debt is like that we talked about on it. It's a movement and uh, we, we think that uh, 
we can't uh, successful if we don't have a global south and global north uh, coordination and our solidarity with each other because if we have the movement climate change uh, for the against the climate problem there is a movement in the north it will complement and supplement movement over here in pakistan is a in pakistan now is people are realizing that uh, is a climatic problem it is not their uh, problem they don't uh, create that problem that's why now the things are moving and uh, new movements are developing over here and we demand all these things and but we need that uh, there would be a, a, a trade unions human rights and uh, political parties and uh, send people in the in the global south to come in a solidarity with us yeah thank you nazir baba wale do you still listen to us yes i'm still here okay so i would have another question to you if, if you have listened to what nazir is uh, just said to us and that uh, the people in pakistan rightly are asking for reparations uh, given to them by the countries responsible for climate change and that they are asking for structural changes is that in any case discussed in sham el sheikh at the moment where you listen to is that a topic of the conference it's a big topic at the conference um, sorry guys my technical stuff had had issues with technicalities um that was, i was trying to explain that before i was young of the internet so it's a big issue right here because people from pakistan like the story he has already talked about many of those people can no longer adapt to the changes that have happened to them um a lot of them have lost their farmlands a lot of them have lost their source of livelihood some of them have lost their homes some have lost their loved ones and many would have to migrate from the areas where they are to new areas that are completely new to them completely new to their culture completely new to the way of life that they had and all of this is what encompasses that this that discussion around loss and damage and loss and damage has been a critical discussion in every space since this cop began and even before the cop began and like i was saying initially one of the key things from this cop was that people have been demanding that a new facility be created for climate finance that just handle strictly loss and damage but this has been welcome with mixed feelings the developed countries some of them are putting a block to say that loss and damage finance specific specific, specific finance for loss and damage cannot be made possible at this cop and we have to shift that discussion to the next cop when it others have said that the developing countries it should be now and should be discussed now and there's need for finance to be made available um but as we know the climate disaster is not going to wait for the negotiation if no action is taken now to put a halt to the extraction of fossil fuel in the world we are going to experience more disaster in coming days coming weeks coming years so that is why the people here are all the clamoring that we should have this in the document yeah like i was saying initially the, the, the word the text loss and then it has found its way into the main text that is a that is one big trick like we had last year where facing out of coal was mentioned in the document but what we have seen this year with the war of ukraine i mean russia invading ukraine it has led to some energy crisis in europe and now europe that was of opinion that africa should be extract from gas of glasgow have suddenly turned back to now start demanding and or start putting pressure on the african government to begin to have a rethink to open up their things to extract for gas and we know gas is also a fossil fuel now there's a new discourse also going on trying to turn gas as transition fuel and also clean fuel we know gas is an option is a family of the fossil fuel and there is no way no matter how clean we paint it or how we paint it it is still going to have impact on our planet and one of the major fears and worries by scientists and everyone around is that gas releases this chemical called methane and methane according to science is 34 times more potent than CO2 in the atmosphere over a long period of time 
what that will mean in literal language and simple words will be that if we continue or if we push more to extract for gas, ready? Yeah, if you push more for gas, it will mean temperature rise. It will mean sea level, sea level rise. It will mean melting on the ice cap. It will mean more rainfall. It will mean more disaster. So um, it's on the bottom and the demand has been clear. Climate impact is going on. It's not stopping, it's increasing. And there's need for the government on the world to take action. And to take that action, now is the time. But the climate disaster is not going to wait. It's already happening and the people want an answer now. They want the climate debt to be paid. They want reparations to be made by those who have who cut in historic, who are historically responsible for the disaster that the world is facing. So I'll just stop right here. Um, I quickly huddle out and yeah. huddle in back after my session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Baba Wale. This is the right time to hand over the question, the first question, then to Noor, because your political activism is based in Germany. That is one of the countries which is responsible for this disastrous uh, situation, which we've heard by Baba Wale as well as from Nazir. So I'll raise a question which uh, I have to admit is a very uh, bad and a question to you, but it's the most important and the most urgent question which we have to discuss not even today but all the next time the question is very short so what is to be done what is it what we can do over here and what it is in respect to what nazia already raised that even also the people in pakistan cannot fight their struggle alone with themselves so what is to be done Noor, it's your turn Thank you. Um, I think there's many things to be done. Um, and I think one of them is to be very aware of what the situation is, particularly in Germany as well. Because as I'm here from Lutzerath, and Lutzerath, Lutzerath is this village supposed to be destroyed because the German government in uh, through the economic ministries has made a deal with RWE that Lutzerat has to be destroyed because of the coal underneath. But we have a lot of founded, found, well-founded information or like well-researched information that if Germany wants to be able to keep the 1.5 degrees, what they promised, then Lutzerat has to stay. When Lutzerat is gone, Germany cannot keep those promises. So Germany is not keeping their own promises. And on the other hand, any kind of like all these fights and struggles are connected, right? So we are still, it's not just that we're not talking about what's happening in Pakistan, but like we're also actively harming more people by, for example, I think there've been two mass deportations to Pakistan since the, uh, the big floods this year. So I think there are a lot of things we have to see. And also with this whole argument about energy, we have to be aware that there's enough energy for the people's needs. It's not enough for the profits. So we have to keep in mind that who are we, who are we fighting for and what is the idea behind it? And we have to be very clear on that and not believe that if, if the Green Party is talking about saving CO2 or something, it's not true because they're just playing with numbers and it's not accurate to the situation we're actually in right now. I can't hear you, Thomas. Thank you. That brings me to somehow to the central point for uh, going on in the beginning in thinking about what, what we all got to know. Everybody now is talking about climate justice. Yeah? Even we are talking about climate justice, the governments are talking about climate justice, the media are talking about climate justice. What does justice mean? And is justice, is that really the right concept to talk about it, especially if it's in combination with climate justice? What are the preconditions conditions of justice? And at least should we not talk instead of justice, uh, should we not talk about equality, equality in the conditions of life for everybody on this planet? Noor. Hmm. I think that 
I think it's interesting to talk about these different ideas and wordings for sure. But I also think that it doesn't change what needs to be done. And I think as important it is, as it is to talk about what words we use, how we frame things, what we're talking about, it's so much, it's also very important to keep in mind what we actually have to do every day right now, right? So also like we have to build towards the alternatives nonetheless, no matter what we call it. Um, yeah, and I do, hmm. I don't know which word I would prefer also personally. I think that's also the answer at the end of the day. You know, it's not it's not the question of uh, concepts as such, because that would be simply an academic joke. The point would be, as you raised before, that we have to combine a lot of struggles. Yeah, We have a lot of struggles all over, but the problem is that all these struggles are necessarily connected to one and a single issue in their start. The question which we want to raise by when we asking is climate justice the right concept or should we not ask for, for equality for everybody on that planet is exactly the question how to bring the struggles uh, together, how to build up at least one struggle because that is that at least is at the heart of the question what is to be done to bring all these struggles together that's the point do we have any idea how we can move to that from one struggle to the next struggle to one common struggle i think what i think baba wallis said in the beginning also as like the one positive note from the summit is the notion of solidarity and fighting together. And I think that is like one of the key, what, it's like very important, I, assume, I think, I know. So if you keep our eyes open, if you listen to each other, if you pay attention, I think we can all connect the struggles and we know it's not just about climate or, right, or people on the move, it's like a much bigger problem. And also as Nasir said before, it's like in this capitalist notion of, the world functioning, what kind of justice or even equitable living for everyone or equal rights for everyone are there even possible? Exactly. That's what I wanted to reach to. Nazir, would you like to add something at this uh, special point at the point of building one common struggle? Nazir, you have to unmute, unmute yourself. Yes, uh, uh, what I say that uh, you see that uh, uh, we come to conclusion uh, from our perspective uh, is our point of view that uh, is a system is economic and a model of uh, development which is responsible for that one. That is, we get to know about that one. But the problem is that to cope with that one and to uh, make a struggle with against it, we are a very weak one. So when we are very weak, we make uh, some compromises about it. Uh, it's a midterm or uh, immediate kind of a thing uh, like that. We talked about it. So in that way, if we have a mass movement, then we can uh, engage the people much and much more people into it. Just like a climate issue is not on, only a working class issue. It's not only a, a peasant issue. It is also a middle class, upper middle class, and even the elite class issue also, because it, it make an impact on all the cross sectional of the society. But uh, actually it, it, it is more problematic and make a more bad effect on the more vulnerable section of the society. But the most vulnerable section of the society, they don't understand what are the reason for that one, especially when we talked about Pakistan, the victims, they don't have that kind of a big uh, idea about it. Why these kind of things happen? They just look into a local reasons for it. Mm. It's very small reasons to look at. They think that, okay, their village is underwater because the one feudal who is a powerful, he has locked the water and opened the cuts towards their village or towards that one, the thing in that way, that is there. But uh, the question and the 
root cause is the much more other than uh, in their village or in their even in their country but outside of the country is also there so is a multiple kind of a uh, dimensional struggles are there so we have to have a uh, some kind of uh, interaction with them just like you see that uh, uh, before that uh, when there was a covid we have a very high kind of uh, interaction with different peoples over here uh, at a global level number of issues just like on a peace movement there was a huge uh, understanding about that one but on uh, at the one point you see that uh, peoples are in a europe it's not their fault but the state whatever they give to the to the propaganda to them they are much more concerned about a ukraine war they are much more concerned about a, a attack of a russia or like that so the peoples are divided on that one some are stupid one they are support the russia and some are having to side with the uh, ukraine like that and they forget about whatever ever happened in pakistan and other countries and millions of million people are suffering from that one so if we organize and we go for the movement and tell them that uh, this is the issue but there are the other issues just like we here in pakistan we are very small organization but we didn't uh, uh, can say that uh, we were against the war in ukraine we have taken a position against uh, russia but we have also taken a position against nato what they are trying to do that one and also again trying to uh, hold europe into the another new uh, arm kind of uh, strategy and our kind of the problems so here in pakistan people understand that one uh, especially in upper middle class middle class in the political spectrum they understand what is our relation with the that war because it affect our industry over here our export also here so in a europe in a north america we also have to say like that one have to make is a more uh, holistic approach about it and that is a time that uh, as uh, uh, baba wala told about in a, what they talked about in egypt egypt is a number of peoples are it's not a homogeneous group there are heterogeneous groups are there but on one point they are agreed that uh, we have we must have a one a climate uh, a kind of uh, on a climate we have a people's movement kind of thing about it like that so even pakistan is we have the problem over here we may raise that one and that issue also be raised in a your uh, ue uh, european union then we have to make a some kind of understanding with each other it will make a impact over here just like in pakistan now before that we have taken a political position on it we says that the debt cancellation not for the aid for the repression for the remediation uh, cut in a uh, 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 military expenditure have a good relationship with india and uh, land for landless peasants we talked about it and it become a, a now is a debate over here in pakistan yeah. and yeah. lot of people are talking on it so it means that uh, if we uh, rephrase our things our uh, ideological issues and our uh, political uh, dispensation we can attract the people and uh, in mass them in our movement yeah, yeah. thanks nazir nur i think in a certain respect in order to to get what we all have to talk about really to the public i think one that is one of the reason by ala abdel fatah one uh, activist in egypt is gone even to the death fasting in a kind of desperate try to to really get the message to the media which means to the attention of everybody as a precondition for bringing all those people together in one struggle we have had the same thing some days ago i think it's about one week two week we had protests in germany on that issue and we had a very strange reaction by our society could you please go on this point 
Can you say another word or two, which protests exactly you mean? Please? These protests were then, uh, uh, it was in Berlin. People were protesting on mm -hmm. the issue of uh, climate, on mm -hmm. that what is happening in the world. And then uh, uh, their actions were brought together with the death mm -hmm. of some person in the traffic. And that creates a kind of special mood in this society as just one problem which we have to deal with. Could you go in these? Um, yes, I could go into more detail, but I think it's also important to always look at it in an abstract level because what, as you already described it, it is that people are protesting about the climate crisis, the climate catastrophe and everything that's happening in the world. However, we are discussing the way they are protesting. And that is part of like, swifting the focus off of what they're actually saying and what they're trying to say and what point they're trying to make. And I think anybody who believes, who understands that we're in the middle of this climate change at this accelerated climate change, which means the climate catastrophe is happening, needs to actually realize what is happening and that even Germany as like whatever they claim to be is not helping. It's not going to keep its promises. And therefore, the protest and making sure that we that people hear about it, that we don't just keep going on the way we go on with our lives here, because we can to a big, like too large scale, we can go unaffectedly by the climate catastrophe at the moment. So making sure that we focus what the point is being made and being in solidarity with those demands and fighting together is actually what we should be focusing on. And Obviously, we need to, as like also on a strategic level, see what actions, what protests make sense and why we choose them and what are the demands we choose. And I think that is also the problem in the media that is happening right now with these young activists having to deal with horrible, well, having to deal with a lot of criminalization also and having to deal with all of that instead of being heard about the content, the, what they're trying to point out. Exactly. Yep. Maybe this is the right point uh, to let some others in, those who have up to now listened to us. For that, I would hand over to Lucas. Yeah, hi. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, you can just post them in the chat. There were no questions yet, uh -huh. but the floor is yours now. So uh, you need to um, write it in the chat, otherwise uh, you will not be able to join the conversation. Maybe we give you a minute and then exactly. we'll see how we continue. Yeah. Okay. So, we don't have any questions so far. That would mean I would hand over to you both, first Nazia, then Nur, for a kind of, ah, uh, you have one? Just a moment. Okay, there's one question uh, about the concept of comments from Negri. Um, doesn't evaluate anymore. It's just, maybe you just can talk about the concept of Negri, maybe in the context of bringing struggles together. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can write out your question a little more, or exactly. or, or I could, uh, if you want to talk to us, just tell us in the chat, please. Just write one, yes. One second. All right, then I'll give you the floor in a second. Wait a minute. Okay, uh, you will now have the option to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's gone. Right. Hello? Yeah, hi. Yeah, hello. Um, um, I'm Daniel. I was at, um, at the Berlin protest of the last generation and also at a climate camp at 
Freiburg, I'm very uh, into the theory of Negri. And I think um, there is not really a problem um, if you are in the wave of protesting, because what she said, um, the girl from Lützerath, it's, it's uh, just um, a feeling of um, um, common sense to fight for this when you're in the, in the movement. But most of the people, they are in the media. And so the question is, um, how can we bring the people to the spaces where this vibe is really existing and they can really uh, smell and feel it, the, the fight? Because I think we, we here in the West, we have the, the, the biggest uh, you know, protection in this fighting and people from other lands, they are really, really fucked up. I spoke with people from Iran and so on. And so it's a, a fucking, um, for me, it's um, the, 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 the highest uh, level of urgency to act as Western people here in a radical way, not in an extremist. I would maybe just react to that in some way. Yes, okay. yes, go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, I think, I think, uh, yes, I also believe we have to be very clear in what we're fighting for and what we're standing for, especially because of the urgency. And that also means that we have to be, we have to be, we have to be coherent maybe is the right word, word, I'm not sure. But it also means like, for example, we have to see what the fights are also that are happening in Germany and have to be there and have to stand for them. And knowing that even though we're in Germany, if I, for example, if I'm protesting in Lützerath, which is right now actually land of RWE, but I can just go there and stand there and live there. And I will not, like the repercussions are not going to be very, very harmful if, and like, it's not gonna be, like I will maybe go to prison at some point if they evict Lützerath and whatever happens, but I'm not, I don't have to fear for my life. And I think that is an extent of the protest and putting it in, into contrast with what's happening in the world. Many people who fight for their rights, who fight for the world are, yeah, have to fear for their lives and have been fearing for their lives like arts in German in context of climate justice movement. And then in context of Germany, people have feared for their lives, had to fear for it, had were in fear of deportation and had to go like underground. And that's something that has been going on, but we forget about these histories and stories. So I think it's not just about getting people to places, to specific places, but it's also about understanding the urgency, learning about the history and understanding how all these struggles are connected in Germany and where the fights are happening and where I have to show up for them. Okay, um, there's another question. Uh, it's how do we keep our heads up struggling? How do we continue fighting with all the people laughing at us because they still don't, do not want to see the urgency with communization and police repression, with state failure and death threats. How do we continue? And there's other ones before, but I will read them in a, in a minute. I think it would be very good if Nazir could uh, give his answer to this question because he's doing, I know that he's trying to answer this question already for a long time. This question of how do we, how do we keep our heads into the struggles under these conditions? How do yeah, we go on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, one uh, experience about it and a very glaring example about uh, Baldia Ali Enterprise. Yeah, we went to, uh, there was a, a, a 10 years ago, there was a factory fire in Karachi in which uh, 260 workers died in that inferno and that factory was producing for a German brand cake, KIK. So we, with the help of uh, industry, uh, with the help of Americo International and other organizations, we come to participate in Germany and file a case against a cake. Yeah, but there was a no law over there in a Germany to uh, sue the and account and make accountable uh, cake. But now we have a, some, it's not a, whatever we want that, uh, but we have a now uh, somehow uh, some uh, uh, kind of uh, a legislation on it. 
and uh, after our struggle, worker got a uh, 5.2 million dollars as a long-term compensation. So it was because of a North and South uh, joint struggle and we get that one. And we get that one uh, uh, because through uh, ILO convention for the 100 years of ILO conventions, uh, ILO's uh, history, it was the first time that uh, that uh, convention was invoked and practiced in a real term in Pakistan. So in that way, we can say that uh, we may have that kind of a struggle. We can do that one and we are working on it on also. And we are looking that uh, how could we sue the, or making a liable, uh, legally liable, all these companies as in, in state, whatever they did with the climatic problem and the climatic uh, calamities over here in Pakistan. And we are collecting that uh, evidence and we are discussion over here in Pakistan with the legal uh, our expert and also we are talking with the uh, German, our friends, that uh, we go for that one. So we have a lot of uh, things to think about it. And uh, we can, we have a new ways to uh, look into for that one. And uh, whenever we go for that one, even we are not successful, but we uh, uh, get uh, something out of it and a new ways for out of it. And we make uh, even uh, sometimes legally we are not uh, uh, get uh, some result out of it, but uh, we make uh, accountable uh, to, towards the people, to the public, whatever they did anywhere is like that. So in that context, we can do on that one also. Exactly. I'm very thankful for that. That's the whole history. Nazi and me, we are sharing for more than 10 years that we have made this kind of struggle concerning. It was something similar to what we are experiencing today with the climate crisis. There was a factory far away from here in Karachi where more than 10 people were burned for the profits of the German company TIK. And then uh, NTOF and Nazir and Medico and two or three more organizations, we were doing this struggle together for 10 years, ending up now in the struggle concerning the floods devastating Pakistan at the moment. And the word which we have told to us, to each of us, always again and again, that for the moment giving, we were doing this activity as a kind of placeholding activity, placeholding for all those people which have still to join this struggle. Yeah, And in order to make the people aware that they have to join the struggle so far only placeholding done by us here together is that we are very clear of the point that we are not talking, at least we are not talking on a catastrophes issues, but we are talking on rights issues, that the people yeah. in Pakistan have the right that all the changes are done, which would give them the possibility to go on with their life and not to uh, stay into the devastation of their lives, which they have to suffer now on it. So I think for us here in that room, this point of going on engaging in a kind of placeholding struggle would be the thing which we have to stick to for some more time, I think. Yeah. Nur, do you want to? Add yeah, I would, add, I would add to the question because it was also about like keeping, how do we keep our heads up through the struggle? And I think. For me, I recently read this quote by Ken Sarviva, who was murdered for his resistance um, and protection of the Ogoni land by shells exploitation, which is, if I remember it correctly, it's um, the struggle itself is about hope. If I didn't have hope, I wouldn't be fighting. And I think for me, it also shows that within the struggle, it's not just about in this fight, it's not about fighting something, but also working on the alternatives, the community we find within these struggles and the people that inspire us and from who we take inspiration and continue our fights. Yeah, um, uh, I, want, uh, I want to add one thing that uh, uh, the uh, uh, Baldia factory fire, our early enterprise uh, struggle, it gave up power again to the people that are uh, if uh, 269, 60 families get to close together and they have uh, 
in a global north in Germany and in Pakistan, they have the organization who go with them and they form their own organization so people can make a change. Now we are faced in one struggle in which we were a successful. Now a lot of people are joining us over here about whatever we are talking with that them that uh, okay this is a climatic problem and you are the victims of that one and the other the criminals and the people who are uh, responsible for that are not here and they are spread uh, on number of places so we have to go and chase them and they understand our point of view and they say that, okay you are those you are the people who were 10 years ago, you were saying that uh, this factory and the factory was fired because they were producing for a general brand and you go went behind the towards the German brand and made them accountable, accountable for that one. It's like that. So in that context, I think that uh, if we have uh, some uh, kind of uh, a success, small even success stories, struggles, along with the people's involvement of the people, we get a much more involvement of the people in it and in Pakistan that is a, is an initial one there is a anger among the people the victims are angry not only with the uh, Pakistani state Pakistan's political parties but also with the European Union or with the UNO and many other organizations they are very much angry with them and that anger can be uh, culminated into a, a, a some kind of a movement which can get a, a result out of it. Mm. Okay. Right. So there's three more questions. I would pose two of them together, maybe. Um, they're not really related, but I think it makes sense to to add them. One of them is more of a comment, is about um, like consumerism and consumption and um, how to minimize it and uh, that we need, need to be truthful to ourselves to talk about that topic as well. And the second one um, is about what actions from the inter international community would Pakistan want to have done by now? Uh, how should the international community act by now? What and what Germany can do maybe? So they're really unrelated, but I think it makes sense to pack them up a little. Yeah. Perhaps Noah would start. Um, yes, then I would say um, that I think we have in this also like with this i think there's enough for what people need it's not enough to make profit with it there's not enough for the profits of the industry but there's enough for people so i don't need to talk about consumption if like right now with the electricity prices and whatnot the regular people have to pay like uh Three, more than three times the the amount that the industry can pay has to pay that they are made sure they don't have to pay more of because they need it for some reason and I think that is the thing we need to talk more about and have to focus more on and not like that RWE is one of the biggest CO2 producer that's not what we're talking about we're talking about individual problems then and I think that is the wrong way to go. Mm -hmm. Azir, you want to add something? Yeah, I think that uh, at the moment, if we want that uh, Pakistan would be get out of the crisis, so first we have to say that uh, cancel the debt because we have to pay a billions of rupees just for uh, the interest on the whatever we have the. Uh, uh, that we have so and we make it possible that uh, these uh, uh, money should be go to the for the rehabilitation of the people who are the victims of climate the issues like that so it's uh, immediately one that we need that one that is one the other one is that uh, whatever they have committed of about uh, 100 billion each year for the rehabilitation and some kind of for the uh, climatic uh, remedy and all these things they have committed for since long they are saying that uh, it should be a now uh, is a practical term they put that money over here and uh, regions where that the problem is lie so because at that moment now people want a food people want shelter people want medicine 
that is the most important and immediate problem at the moment in Pakistan uh, for the victim. So it made possible because if we cancel the debt and all the money which goes for the debt, it should go divert to that one. That is the one. The other one is uh, immediately Germany and many other countries, if they subsidize number of uh, companies and like that, they can also now come up with the situation and uh, all the big uh, uh, these uh, industrialized state, they pay for a repatriation or for remediation and also for that one. Otherwise, uh, that this crisis is, uh, is a human catastrophe in a coming three or four or six months. I think we should keep these two points as that we, what is given to us at the moment that uh, uh, in order to solve the situation simply only in Pakistan, which is only one situation, we could have talked about South Sudan, we could have talked about mm -hmm. Somalia, we could have talked about Nigeria. No matter. At the moment, we can start with these two points that there is a point with the debt cancellation as yeah. one of the first things which is needed, not in order only to give relief to this or that country, but to start to change the power relations between the global north, uh, north and the global south. And the second point, which uh, we, especially here in our countries, we have to focus on that it is not at all a question of relief, but it's a question of reparations which have to pay that those who are responsible have to pay and that this is a right to ask and to demand reparations and not simply to ask for help that is the point which we have to start at the given moment i think yeah but we have it to connect it to all the questions or or to this very general demand that at least we all know that the responsibility for the devastated situation of the world lies by the given capitalist mode of production and that we have to change that. Both of these things oh. under a in a short time, we are in a freeze now. This is now the difference to all the struggles which we have led years before, where we always could think that well, we have time to change the mood of the people, but now time is running out. I think this is the point we simply have to keep in mind. I think it makes no sense if we would demand from ourselves to give complete answer on this question. We should, I think we can stop here with these points, these two points. Start with the concrete things, which is the most near thing at the hand at the given moment, not forget that it's a question of changing the power relations of the world, the power relation between North and South and changing the mode of production and the mode of life we are all into. And that we have to find answers for that in a period of time, which is becoming shorter day by day. I think somehow this is the situation we have to face. And that is what we meant with the invitation to this talk, which is we are in the climate change and somehow we are not really in the climate change because it's not quite clear what that all means to us. And we have to stick to this question. Stick to this question is something I think we should not forget that we have questions to solve in that answers we are giving day by day. I think we can stop here. Should we do that? Okay, thank you very much for all of you. Thank Noor, thank Nadia. Baba Wale is no longer with us. Thank you all and we will talk again. I think we urgently need to talk. Thank you.